الحمد لله أش وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا محمد الذي أرسلته رحمة للعالمين لولاه ما عرفنا رمضان لولاه ما عرفنا ليلة القدر ولولاه ولولا نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم لما عرفنا أي شيء وأي فرح في هذه الدنيا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله We are in the last جمعة of رمضان سبحان الله how رمضان this year how many people have said to me how this month has gone by quicker than any other month. No other month has gone by as quick as this month, subhanAllah. Despite the 18 hours worth of fasting that we have to do, subhanAllah, it has gone. Never to come back until next year, inshaAllah ta'ala. Like in how, many, how many of us will be returning to greet it? To greet it? Mwadda, mwadda, ya Ramadan. Farewell, farewell to Ramadan. Come back to us with the Ghufran, with forgiveness. And we know that many of us, subhanAllah, with the heat, many of us are tired. Many young people are tired. Many of our old people are even more tired. And subhanAllah, this is this month of Ramadan has come in a very hot time of the year. And I have noticed, subhanAllah, within myself and within many people that the himma, that the motivation has gone down. However, we need to be careful because our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the last days, it's particularly al ashr al awakhir from Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam would be working a lot more harder, would be striving a lot more harder. And we find in a hadith narrated by the Hufad of Hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam وسلم يجتهد في رمضان ما لا يجتهد في غيره He would strive to do good works in Ramadan more than any other month And we see, mashallah, the first day, the first two days, first week, mashallah, the mosque is full Brothers are, mashallah, a lot of him, a lot of energy However, something we need to understand that the big prize, that the jackpot, what people like to call it, that the super prize is in the last 10 days. Every day is special, but the last 10 days is where you're going to win, where you're going to be rich. The Prophet in the last 10 days of Ramadan would work more harder than any other days of Ramadan. And he would, subhanAllah, work and fast and read Qur'an and do more acts of worship. Opposite to many of us, we do, we do steam. So this khutbah, insha'Allah ta'ala, is for you and for myself, first and foremost, as a targheeb, insha'Allah, to work. MashaAllah, the finish line is nearby. The light at the end of the tunnel is nearby. However, is the point of Ramadan we just go by and no feeling, not have anything? MashaAllah, we had the class yesterday with some of the young children. I said to them, what do you hope to get out of Ramadan? And some of the young children, MashaAllah, they said, we hope our sins to be forgiven. We hope to pray all our five prayers because we find it hard praying at home. SubhanAllah, there's a hadith that the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi wa Wasallam said, رُبَّمَا حَضَّ صَائِمٌ Maybe all a person will get from his fasting, his hunger and thirst. Maybe a person who's getting up and praying all night, all he gets is a sihr, staying up. Nothing else. Hunger, thirst and feeling tired. That's the experience of some people. But however, that should not be the experience of al-mu'min, al-taqi, al-naqi. This should not be our experience. 
So what's so special about the last 10 days of Ramadan? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has explained to us and there's a, a short surah in the Qur'an. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ Verily we have, Allah says we, mean the grand we. We have revealed this message, Al-Qur'an, in this night. The night of decree or the night of power. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, what is the night of decree? It is the night that is better better than a thousand months. One night better than one thousand months. What else happens? The angels will ruh. Sayyidina Jibreel. They descend. They come down. And we're going to talk about this. And it is peace. Salam hatta al fajr. Peace. Salam. Amen. Until the fajr comes. So this is what is in the last 10 days of Ramadan, a night of power, the jackpot. Don't let this night go by with you just talking and laughing and messing around. Make the most of this night. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, تحرروا ليلة القدر في العشر الأواخر من رمضان Look, seek, search for the night of power in the last 10 nights. And the hadith related by Imam Bukhari, إلى دخل العشر الأواخر من رمضان أحيا الليل Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam when the last 10 days of Ramadan came, he wouldn't get lazy. Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. He wouldn't start missing taraweeh. He wouldn't start skipping the Quran. He wouldn't start slipping back into some of his old habits before Ramadan because he's bent out. Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam He would give life Ahya layl Give life to the night How are you going to give life to the night? By praying By reading the Quran Spending some time in the masjid MashaAllah Many things, reading the Quran Doing some da'wah Benefiting yourself with something good This is something you can do, give life to the night and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't a selfish person. He would wake up his family. What for? To make the suhoor? La. What for? So his family could also join in in this night of power. And from this the ulama say that even if a woman, she's on her period and she can't come to the mosque and she can't fast, she can still benefit from this night. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Jadda Wa Shadda Al Mi'zara And he would strive, work harder, push himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi In this month And he would not have relations with his wife In these 10 days In these particular 10 days Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi He would focus more on Allah Sayyidina Aisha Radiyallahu Anha She said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam If I know it is Laylatul Qadr And how are you going to know? Though there are signs we're going to mention Inshallah Sayyidina Aisha She said Ya Rasulullah If I know it is If I know it is Laylatul Qadr What should I say? And this hadith is narrated by Imam Tirmidhi Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam Said Told her And told us Quli اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعف عنا أو الله truly you are all pardoning you pardon you forgive and you love to pardon تحب العفو you love to pardon فعف عنا and pardon us forgive us this is what we should be saying and this is what we hear سبحان الله we hear in this mosque we hear this سنة being read out so people can learn this sunnah has this hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi. It was said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam he looked at the a'mar at the lifespans of the umam the previous nations before and he saw that the previous nations for previous prophets they lived many many years. We know that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam he lived 950 years. 
So when our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi sallam saw the previous women, nations living longer, and that they have more opportunities to worship Allah azza wa jal, Allah gave the Prophet and the Ummah a hadiyya, a present. And this present is Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Tayyib, what's one night going to do for you? We're not going to live for 1,000 years, or 950, or 5, or 4. Most of us, subhanAllah, will pass away before 70 or 80. So what's one night going to do for you and I? Well, this one night, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِشَةٍ Better! خَيْرٌ Better! More! than 1,000 months. And if you look at this, if you calculate this, one Laylatul Qadr is equivalent of worshipping Allah 84 or 83 years and 4 months. One Laylatul Qadr is like you've worshipped Allah for 83 years and 4 months. So if you were to catch Laylatul Qadr and Allah Azza wa Jal accepts Laylatul Qadr from you, which is more important, for 12 years, 12 years you catch Laylatul Qadr and you worship Allah correctly, you worshipped 1,000 years. Subhanallah, 1,000 years if you catch 12 years of this night. In the hadith written by Imam Bukhari, the Imam Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, has said, whoever gives life to this night, Laylatul Qadr, imanan with iman, wa ihtisaban, looking for its reward, looking. Looking for the reward, seeking it, sitting in a mosque after everybody's gone, reading the Quran, doing dhikr, coming to a class, ihtisab and searching for it, thirsty for it, then his sins, his previous sins are forgiven. Uh, hadith by Imam Nasai and his upcoming sins. Previous sins and upcoming sins are forgiven. طيب, the wisdom, the hikmah why Laylat al Qadr is hidden. From us. It's because if you knew what night, it'd be easy. You just turn up and start worshipping Allah on that night, and the rest of the day, the rest of the time, you'd be in ghafla. So our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not told us exactly where it is. Allah has hidden it from the Ummah so that we treat the odd nights. And the ulama has said that a hadith that Laylatul Qadr is either on the 21st, which is gone, or the 23rd which is gone, or the 25th, or the 27th, which still remains, or the 29th, and in one hadith, the last night as well. So we don't know which night is better than the thousand months, we don't know which night our sins are going to be forgiven, how we should treat all these odd nights, and we shouldn't just focus that 27th night is the only night. The ulama have said, higher probability of 27th, but it's not the only night. So. What happened? What are the signs, alamat, of Laylatul Qadr? The ulama have said that the malaika descend, as we heard in the, in the Quran, the angels descend, and there's a beautiful hadith that gives us a picture as to what exactly happens when the angels come down. A hadith narrated by Imam al Bayhaqi with Ibn Hibban. And Ibn and, and Mundari relates it in his book, A Tarheeb Tarheeb, that on Laylat, Laylat al Qadr, the angels descend, and the Ruh, Sayyidina Jibreel, also descends with a huge army of angels. They descend to the earth. And they are carrying a green flag. And this green flag is placed on top of the Kaaba on this night. And the angels, they go around looking for people who are making the most of this night, who are reading the Qur'an, who are doing i'tikaf, who are doing good deeds, and they go and they send salam to them. And Sayyidina Jibreel in the hadith, he gives salam to the person on Laylatul Qadr who he sees is worshipping Allah correctly. And the ulama is a hadith mentioning that if Sayyidina Jibreel shakes your hand, your heart becomes soft, and you have the mu'ah, you start crying. SubhanAllah, this is one sign. And then the angels go by, and when the fire people are making dua, the angels say, Ameen, Ameen. So the angels, there's this like he heaven on earth. So many angels on earth. So many angels going around. 
And these angels, subhanAllah, are looking for people. However, how, who are they going to find? Are they going to find people at home, watching TV? Are they going to find people asleep? Are they going to find people not doing anything? They're going to look for people on this night. And they're going to say, Ameen, after their prayers. And then, Sayyidina Jibreel, just before Fajr, he calls out, Ar-Rahil, 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 it's time to go. It's time to go. And all the angels, they go. We said, Najibri, they leave the earth. However, one of the angels asks Sayyidina Jibreel, What is Allah? What has Allah done tonight? Allah has ordered us to come down. But what has Allah Azza wa Jal done to the Mu'mineen? And Sayyidina Jibreel tells that Allah Azza wa Jal has gazed upon the Mu'mineen and has forgiven them on this night. This night they have been forgiven. And except for four people, the one who is an alcoholic or a drug addict, and the one who is disobeying, who is disobeying his parents, and the one who cuts off his family, whether his, his children not talking to the father, or the father not talking to the children. And the last one is an al-mushahin, al-munafiq, the hypocrite who causes problems between the mu'mineen. These four, they are not forgiven on this particular night. So subhanAllah, make the most of this night. We don't know which night is going to be, 27th, 29th, or even the last night, subhanAllah. Make the most of it, inshaAllah ta'ala. And finally, a few reminders that we have zakat al-fitr. There are boxes around the masjid with zakat al-fitr. You have to pay zakat al-fitr. And it is five pound for every member. So if you are a family of three, you, your wife, and a son, or a daughter, then you pay for each one. You pay for yourself, your wife, and each children, five pound each. You have to pay this, inshallah ta'ala, before Salat al-Eid. And has, is the adah here, the custom that the, they will remind you beforehand. But please, inshallah, if you have the money, inshallah, pay zakat al-fitr, and all of us are able to pay zakat al-fitr. And the ulama have mentioned the hadith, that if you don't pay zakat al-fitr, there's a hadith that says your fasting is mu'allaqa, is suspended, it won't go up. It's not accepted until you pay your zakat al-fitr. <coughs> and also, <coughs> next week, subhanAllah, will be Salat al-Eid, and the first prayer, as usual, will be 8.30, and our second prayer, as usual, will be 9.15, inshaAllah ta'ala, and as usual, inshaAllah, we're going to do our our march here in the road, and we hope, inshaAllah, people will come and share and march, inshaAllah, in this procession, showing our happiness for our fasting, and Allah Azza wa accept our fasting, inshaAllah ta'ala. So if you're here, inshaAllah, for Salat al-Eid, and you have 10 minutes, march around with us, inshaAllah. Show people why we are happy to be Muslim, that your children come and march with us. And finally, inshaAllah ta'ala, today's collection uh, will be uh, for the Shaykh, inshaAllah, has a token, of our gesture, token of our thank you for him, because mashallah he's done a lot for us, subhanAllah, and this is a very difficult time, it's a difficult place he's come from, so we ask people inshallah to generate, to donate generously inshallah to him, as a token of our thank you to him, inshallah ta'ala.